Today I'll be talking about my setup and the way I hold the violin. Let's get into it. Welcome to the first episode of Violin Playing. When it comes to holding the violin, there are many schools of thought. Here's what works for me. First of all, it's impossible to talk about posture without tackling the big question. Shoulder rest or no shoulder rest? Here's my answer to that. As you know, most of the greats have played without a shoulder rest. And that's exactly what initially made me curious about this matter. And I'm very happy that I underwent this change, because I feel like I'm a much happier player now than I was 10 years ago when I was still using that thing. So the first question is, why should you get rid of your shoulder rest? The first reason I will give you is... There is no question that the violin simply sounds better without a shoulder rest. The sound is bigger, the violin rings more, and you can literally feel the vibration of the instrument in your hands. The second reason why I think you should switch is that the way you're creating sound will change completely. With the shoulder rest, there is so much support from below, you basically rest your arm on the violin. You don't have to support anything from below, because the shoulder rest is doing all of the job. So you have this downward force, your hand dragging the neck down, and then you have this other thing, the bow and the right hand pressing into the string. So you have those two forces that are both directed to the floor, and what's the only force that's trying to prevent this from happening and counterbalancing it? Your neck and your head clamping down on the violin, trying to still keep it at a horizontal level, because everything else is dragging the violin down. Now on the other hand, if you play without the shoulder rest, you have to counterbalance all of that energy with your thumb and your left hand. Now we have two forces working against each other. You have this and this. You're not only jamming the bow into the string, now you're jamming the violin into the bow. So you have this kind of action. I'll give you an example. Watch my scroll swaying left and right as I'm playing in counter motion to the bow. See, on this slide, for instance, I really jam the violin into the bow. You're giving a boost in the right hand, but the left hand is also doing this, so you can make small adjustments how much pressure goes from the violin to the bow and from the bow into the violin. And that can be an incredibly expressive tool. So you can see it's incredibly satisfying to do that. So now that we have covered the benefits, let's talk about how to get there. So when you're first starting out, I would recommend using a sock or a towel or something, a handkerchief to put right here as a little bit of a support. It also makes it much more comfortable. Something that you can fold up and put under your violin roughly here in the middle. I would say don't go too close to the end of the violin and don't also go too close to the corner. I would put it somewhere right here. There was this one product I really enjoyed a few years back. It's a sponge and it's called Acousta Grip. And I didn't really use it as intended. I cut it in half and used it like that. But it's extremely comfortable and I think it's a great way of getting into the whole feeling and getting used to it. I ended up using this little towel which I put under my shirt. It makes it a little bit more comfortable and also helps to have a little bit of an angle to the violin so it's not completely flat. You'll probably find yourself gradually using less and less material until you're basically comfortable playing without anything at all. So where do you put this? Whatever sock or handkerchief you're using. Touch your collarbone. You can do this with me right now. Touch your collarbone here and in front of the collarbone and follow along the collarbone until you hit the end of it where the shoulder starts, right? There's like a gap or like a hole, whatever you want to call it. And I would then go back on the cobble maybe a little bit, maybe like two centimeters if you're thinking metric 
a two centimeters or like, I don't know, half an inch or something. A little bit closer and that's where I put this. Yeah, on the collarbone, not on the shoulder, because that's another point. Don't try to support your violin with your shoulder. Check this out. My shoulder is completely free as I'm playing. Yeah, that's a very important thing, because that's a very fast way of getting yourself in a lot of trouble and pain if you're using your shoulder. And trust me, I've been there. Now, the way I hold the violin is more right in front of me. I don't like the whole off to the side thing because I feel like it puts more stress on the shoulder. This is much more comfortable to me. I'm looking right down the fingerboard, everything is right in front of me and I feel like I'm in complete charge of what's going on. What you also want to do is put your elbow more underneath, actually kind of over below the violin, right? Because now you're supporting the violin just with your thumb. So in order to be able to do that, it's much more comfortable to have this because look, now the violin is resting on my thumb. And I don't recommend these kind of bow holes where the thumb is around the neck or to the side. I like it right underneath and a bit backwards because that also rotates my hand in. So I'm basically holding it like this, almost like a guitar player would hold the violin, right? And that again gives me much better access to the fourth finger it makes everything more articulated, cleaner. I can play double stops much more easily. I'll be making a separate video about the left hand as well, but this is a little sneak peek. So thumb backwards, hand rotated in as the violin is right in front of you. And uh, for me, that's the best setup possible. Also, I feel like when you have the elbow rotated in more, it kind of frees your vibrato. I don't know what it is, but it feels better. Again, another separate video of vibrato coming up. For now, this will do. Another thing that I find very helpful is the positioning of your head. It's much more towards the center of the violin, so your, your head is basically on top of the tailpiece almost, when you look at me the way I'm doing it, right? The chin is like on top of the tailpiece. This is the moment when I also want to talk about the chin rest and the shape thereof and the importance of that shape. You see, what I did with my chin rest, for instance, is I have slanted it, so there's a slope here which locks right underneath your jawbone. And that is so important because that basically changed everything about the way I play without a shoulder rest. Now, shifts downwards are not a problem because the the violin is held in place, right? Look at that. I can do this all day long and the violin is not going to get away from me. There are some chin rests that are even sloped the opposite way, which I completely blows my mind why anybody would use that. The violin is basically trying to get away from you, just rejecting all the time. You don't want that. You deserve better than that. What I've used to create this thing is some self-adhesive stuff. For instance, these are the felt pads that you would put on the feet of your furniture so it doesn't scratch up the floor. Very handy, gives you a little bit of height and you can basically cut it up as you please. And then I put a gel rest on top just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and also more comfortable. Obviously, I link all the things I'm using in the description of the video. So you can come up with your own little creation. Let me know what you're using in the comments, maybe if you already have something in place. So yeah, that's how I hold the violin. I hope it will help you on your journey. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Happy practicing and see you in the next video.